time out of our day or evening to shop. Many of us make lists to help us shop efficiently, or so we'd like to believe. Most of us feel more confident and in control when we have a list, but once again, our actions can be the opposite to our intentions. Most people believe that if they take a shopping list at the grocery store, they'll end up spending less money because they won't buy impulse items. In reality, the opposite is true for many people. When it, when it comes to shopping, do you pretty much stick what's on your list? Mm, try to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do try to, but um, if I see sell items or things like that, then no, I'll go for those too. People who take shopping lists spend longer shopping in the grocery store. People who spend longer shopping in the grocery store tend to buy more items that they didn't plan on buying. So it seems pretty clear that having a list can backfire. The irony is we spend more money with a list than without one. When we've successfully completed our lists, we reward ourselves with impulse buys. We buy more. Brian Wonsink wanted to find out why we often buy more than we need when we go to the supermarket. Is it because we're just plain careless? He went to over 400 homes in search of what he calls cabinet castaways. It was pretty amusing some of the things people drag out. In one case, there were some quail eggs that somebody bought, canned quail eggs that they were going to use for a recipe that never came around. Uh, in another case, uh, somebody had a can of whale meat. This is whale meat that was left over from rationing time during World War II and it had actually been passed on from her mother. Um, how long have you had this, marshmallow cream? Mm, with the new uh, liquid bottom? Seven or eight years. <laughs> <laughs> you think maybe I ought to throw it out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or give it to a friend. No, yeah, that was um, to make candy. There's a recipe for candy that I've been promising myself I would make, and I got it from a friend, and obviously I've never done it. It's a, it's a Christmas a holiday kind of thing. So. Oh, and I think now that it's time to buy another jar and let it sit for another eight years. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, oh, that is amazing. No, what, what is this? It's a beef brisket. Okay. okay. But obviously and, and it's they, too big for that's my right, husband and yeah. I. You didn't have anything bigger you could buy, though, right? No, no, that was it. He kind of thought that was a great idea, and he knows we like to have parties, but somehow it's never gotten used, and I really don't even know if I can use it now. How long has it been in there? Um, I think about a year and a half. I bought it last summer. Yeah. Not this last summer, but the summer before. We're essentially our own worst enemies. You know, we're the people who think we're going to have a lot of time to make something and we never make it. We're the people who over... Uh, anticipate the number of guests that are going to arrive at our house for a party and never arrive. If Brian Wonsink thinks we're our own worst enemies, what influences our choice of products? Why do we buy and behave in the ways that we do? Much research 